welcome to Cosplay Live, brought to you by Game Traders. My name is Suzanne, today I'll be doing a tutorial on how to use Warbler, and it'll be the first in a long line of tutorials, so I'll be showing you how to use it, mould it, and safely work with it, so let's get started. Today we'll be making hip armour for a costume I'm making. Uh, I'll be showing you some sandwich method today. It's when you have two pieces of warbler with a thin piece of uh, craft foam in the middle of it. You heat, you sandwich, and then you cut. Uh, here's one I made earlier to show you how it looks and also the different layering methods as well you can use. Warbler is a thermoplastic. It is heatable and it is moldable. It's when it's dry or when it's cool, it is very, very solid, very, very hard. As you can see, it's it gives a little bit of flex, but not a lot. The warbler has two sides to it. So it has a rough side and it has a smooth side. The smooth side is slightly more adhesive. So when you're sticking your warbler together, it is always better to use this side of it than this, but it does stick to itself. So if, it's not a huge issue if you do accidentally use this side, but we do suggest you use this. So this is a sheet of warbler, as you can see, it is a lovely gingerbread brown colour. It doesn't smell like gingerbread and it probably doesn't taste like gingerbread. Cool. So now I'll be showing you what you need to use to work with warbler. It's fairly simple. Uh, we have, today I'll be using one little thick craft foam that you can get from most craft stores. Um, it's usually fairly cheap. You can get loads of different thicknesses of EVA foam to use as well. So it just depends on what you're making. What I'm making today, I want it to be quite thin looking. I don't want it to be overly bulky. We have your marking pens. Uh, you can use, I use just Sharpies, which are really, really easy and quick to use. We have your scissors. I have a pre-made pattern. Uh, I use tracing paper with patterns. You can use newspaper, um, you can use pattern paper. It's loads of different things. Uh, I always pre-draw my patterns, and that is something that I will be doing in a later tutorial. You have a heat board, because you don't want to be heating using a heat gun on just a standard table, because it will burn. You obviously have your heat gun. Now, it is a heat gun. Please be careful with it. It is hot. Don't put your hand on this area. Don't put your hand under the uh, airflow when it comes out as well. And obviously, you will need your warbler. Now, heat guns, you can use a few different things. Uh, some people use their oven, some people use a hairdryer. I personally use a heat gun. I personally recommend you use a heat gun. You can pick them up from anywhere, from $25 up to $100. Uh, I got mine from a, a, like a hardware store, like Bunnings. So it is pretty easy to come by and it's the easiest to use. Uh, hairdryers can take a long time if you actually get to it to the melting temperature. Now, warbler has to be heated to around 90 degrees. If you overheat your warbler, it is going to go a very white and brittle color. When you heat it, you want it to go a nice caramel brown color, which I'll be showing you in a minute. Now, it's really important not to overheat your warbler, and it's really important not to hurt yourself with your heat gun, so please be careful with that. So I'll be starting with my foam. I've already pre-drawn a pattern onto this. It's just a very simple heart shape. The foam that I was using was quite small. This one is a little bit larger. The reason I've chosen this to show you is because you can put warbler over this without the seams showing. So when I heat it, I will be putting warbler on this side and to onto this side. But for my final, I'll be using this side of the pattern because it hasn't got the masking tape on it. Um, the masking tape isn't a huge issue. You just gotta be careful with reheating. Foam can be heated and shaped by itself as well. It doesn't hold quite as well as Warbler does, but it does release a little bit of gas with it as well. It's nothing you can smell and it shouldn't be too dangerous to you depending on what foam you are using. This foam is quite safe, uh, but it does mean when you do start doing the sandwich method, you could, if you're starting to reheat it, you could get some bubbles, which I will talk about more in a minute. So I'm just going to quickly cut this out. Now, so I have my just little cut out heart. What we'll be doing is we'll be tracing it onto the warbler. Now, I flip my warbler over onto the smooth side because that's the side I want to do. It's really important if you don't have a perfectly symmetrical item, so a heart is fairly symmetrical. If you're, say, doing something like my scissors, you'd be wanting to layer it down one way and then the other. 
please don't just do a copy of that and a copy of that because when you go to sandwich the pieces together, it's gonna end up with rough on smooth, which isn't a huge issue if that happens, but as I said earlier, it is just easier if it's both smooth and smooth. So, what are we doing? So I've just traced out our patterns. I'm going to use a fairly large pair of scissors for these. It's good to have a like a pair just for your warbler instead of using your uh, like sewing scissors and stuff for it because they'll start to blunt them. Now, when cutting your warbler and for the sandwich method and even for the folding method, you really want to be cutting roughly a, about less than a centimetre around each side. Um, that way when you go to sandwich it and when you go to cut it to mould the, uh, the, the warbler together, it will stick nicely. So, you do what I do. side facing up so I know which side I'm using. Uh, you can heat either side again but adhesive better. So now I'll be showing you how to heat it. You need your heat gun, you need your heat board. Uh, it's really important to be wary of where your hands are. I would personally move everything off the board especially your foam because uh, it can start to mold itself. So heat gun, this has two little uh, settings. I use it on two, you can use it on one. You really want to be holding it roughly about What I'd suggest is here is just on a gentle heat, start to heat around the edges because they're the sections we're going to be cutting. Or you should still be able to mould it to whatever which way you want it to. Now remember to heat both sides again. If a bubble starts to form, I'll show you. Now I haven't heated this over overly hot, so it's really important just to be careful. When you're sandwiching, it's important that you have one side that you want and one side that is obviously the back side. So I'm using my fingers with this because I haven't over I haven't heated it super hot. But you may want to get something, uh, usually a blunt object, uh, maybe metal, to just gently do and just press down with it. So this is my front piece that I'll be using. And if I start to think, you can start to see where it started to bubble a little bit and so that's the second side as well. So we will start cutting while it is still warm. Now don't cut into the foam because if you start cutting into the foam it is going to uh, start showing the foam through and not 
uh, mesh that warbler together. Now that I have cut the warbler together, it has become a very, very nice seam. You can trim that if you'd like. Um, the cooler it starts getting, the less it's going to stick together. As you can see, it's still a little bit, and you can see where the bubbles are forming. It's not a huge issue. What that is is the gases from the foam is trying to escape, and obviously it can't. Um, so you can just meld those in for what I'm doing. I can just, and as you can see, this area started to cool, whereas the outside areas are still. And then we just shape it, and it's usually takes a few minutes at the max to and as you can see even then it's already starting to, to hold its shape. So I've kept my uh, scrap pieces. Now the more layers you have with your warbler the harder it will start to be to heat it. This could be heated and moulded and shaped into a, a horn or um, whatever you want. I'm going to be using these today to show you a few different methods to layering warbler. Um, this is both rough and rough side but this is fine for going straight onto the warbler. Um, sometimes uh, depending on what you're doing, you may need to glue some stuff, but if you're going wobbler wobbler, you should just be able to heat it, and if it's heated properly, apply it straight onto there. As you can see, it's already holding its shape, so I don't really have much to do with that. Um, for any bubbles, you just sort of gently work it back into it. If the bubbles are quite large, you can try gently getting a very small pin and putting a little hole in it, letting the gases escape and then remolding it back in. Just be very, very careful when you do that though. You don't want to ruin what you're doing. So this is a little scrap piece of warbler. I'm going to be showing you what it looks like when you overheat your warbler. So, you've got your heat gun. As you can see, it's starting to get that beautiful caramel. So that is an overheated piece of warbler. It becomes quite rough, but it is very wobbly. Um, your warbler should be this, like, not maybe not quite like this, but um, as you can see the difference in the colour. When Then when it comes to painting um, on this, it's a little bit more rough, and obviously the warbler is a little bit more brittle. Now, when you've got your hard warbler, it's pretty sturdy. I'd be able to tear something very thin like this section, but trying to rip this would be quite hard, whereas when the warbler is malleable, it just tears. Um, this would be uh, a little bit harder if it wasn't so already overheated. Uh, I wouldn't personally use this as scrap um, unless I was moulding it into something with other good pieces of uh, scrap warbler as well. So now I'm going to show you a few ways to uh, layer your warbler. So this is a bit I tried a few different methods on to bring in today. We have your scrap warbler method, we have your sandwich method, and we have your folded method. As you can see, the sandwich and the folded looks pretty much the same, but you can tell a major difference with your scrap pieces of warbler. Uh, this is also just heated warbler applied gently onto the area. The double layered warbler is going to take maybe a little bit longer and you have to be a little bit more gentle when you heat this. You don't want to overheat each section and you really want to be sort of flipping around and trying to get both sides. So that is definitely... So as you can see you can mould it, it can be sort of like a putty. What I'll be doing now is just gently creating it. Now, don't, I wouldn't suggest a rolling pin for this. It would, uh, I think it would just be a bit too sticky for the area. So as you can see, I've layered it to a point. So this can be quite hot to work with, so please be careful. So I'm gonna do just a very basic scrap. So as you can see, it doesn't look quite as nice as the other two bits. But it does do wonders um, if you're using it uh, for other little bits. This can be reheated, but as I mentioned before, it can take a little bit more time to do. So I fold it over just a little bit on the back side.
and that's your mix of those. As you can see, it's quite rough. Warbler can be sanded, uh, but you just got to take your time with it. So we want to uh, always have a pattern, always have your pattern ready. This is my sort of double layered pattern. I've got the full side on here and then I have the cut out sections I want to detail. I would always suggest taking your pattern and drawing out exactly what you need. As you can see, I, I didn't do it on this side. It was just sort of to show. The reason for this is that way you get a nice, even and clean area for you to do so. You're not just trying to do this and getting it thick and thin in different areas. To continue on with our layering techniques. Um, so this was the lovely scrap piece. All of the bits I've got here are used from scrap pieces of wool. So Please don't chuck this out, it's so valuable. I made a whole outfit and a whole weapon just out of scrap bits. So it's really important to keep it. So at the moment I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing it. So I'll be doing my fold method for this because it is so small, and these bits will go here, because it's so small you'll find that this will just fold straight onto it and almost give more of a, uh, a sandwich look anyway. But um, I'll show you a few issues that this method does have. Uh, and then this is the double layer method. Uh, a lot of people prefer this method when uh, doing layering things for painting. So I'll show you the fold method first. So I'd always suggest to move your like done pieces of wool just out of the airflow because you don't want uh, like to put it right here and then heat this section of this your finished piece to start to heat up again as well. And that's what you want. As you can see, it's a lovely caramel colour. What we'll be doing is applying our little one little thick craft foam section, just like that, and we'll start to heat the other side just gently. A little bit bubbly, but as you can see, I'm starting to fold it. Now, the problem with the folds is that you'll start getting these little bits here, so you've got to be really careful when you're trying to round off now this method is fine as well, uh, it just depends on what you're going for. If you're only doing small amounts of armour, um, the sandwich method isn't usually too bad. I use the fold method um, quite a bit, honestly, purely because that I usually make uh, full armoured suits, so I like to get my warbler to go a little bit further personally. So I'm going to keep these bits because they will be useful. So as you can see, it looks pretty much the same from the front. That's, uh, that's not overheating, that's a little bit of paint from here. And that's the inside. As you can see, the inside's not quite as nice and smooth as this, but you can always work that into it if you heat it gently. So what I'll be doing is I'll be applying it onto here. What you want to do is you want to give this a very gentle Excellent. The heating will help uh, the water adhere to itself. So. And then you can work it into the sides. So a sandwich piece of water is going to be a little bit more uh, mold like work resistant than uh, the double layer method I'm going to show you in a minute. That's just purely because of the foam. So as you can see, I've just worked that into this section. If you want to give this back section a heat as well to uh, work this into itself a little bit better so it's not quite so liney, you can definitely do that as well. So there's that method over the scrap warbler method. So these are scrap pieces as well but they haven't been worked together to do it. So what we'll be doing is just gently, um, I'm using uh, the rough side and uh, lay it onto the adhesive side for what this is. It's not a huge issue for this because it's just going straight onto itself. So we'll give these a gentle heat. Now as you can see small bits of warbler are likely to try and fly off a little bit so please be Careful. Now the smaller the warbler, the higher chance you can overheat it, so please be very, very careful. So you layer this one to itself. And then heat up the section as well. And apply it on. 
So this can be molded and directioned a little bit better than your... And you'll also find it will probably work into the wall a little bit better as well. It really just depends on what type of edge you're looking for. We've got the differences. We've got your double layered method. This could have as many like rises of wobbler as you want. We've got your folded method, which looks a lot like your uh, sandwich method. We have your just your scrap pieces of wobbler just worked together and applied. And we have your sandwich method for this as well. So in future wobbler tutorials, we'll be doing how to paint it and uh, a few different methods for doing it as well. But um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching today. Today we're brought to you by Game Traders. For future tutorials, we'll be doing painting, warbler and other products as well. We'll be also showing you how to use deco art. We'll be using Wonderflex, Cobra Cars, some floss shape. You'll be seeing me putting them all together as well. I'll be adding electronics to things like our LEDs. So if you like today's tutorial, please share, rate, subscribe and hashtag CosplayLive. Bye guys.